It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. You might not be an A, but you are a B Plus. Check it out. Here we go. You want to mess with us? Good afternoon, everyone out there in the B Plus lane. It is me, the one and only Mr. Mysterious, and welcome to the Major League Report, the podcast where we cover all the goings on in the world of Major League Wrestling. We get into the nitty gritty of everything MLW, and what a wonderful time to do so. It's a very, very diverse episode of MLW I'm going to be talking to you guys about, as well as all the other big news coming out of the MLW camp slowly getting better slowly right slowly more news of constantly evolving more facets to it each and every time i talk about it i do apologize if i might be a bit slower today like i'm just fighting a bit of a couple headaches and everything else i've taken some neurofin it's going to kick in eventually while i'm talking but for right now you don't want to hear about that you want to hear about me talk about mlw because what an episode what an episode after last week where we had a very mm, elongated, divisive two out of three falls match for the MLW World Tag Team Championships, and then you had the other match as well with uh, Jordan Oliver. It wasn't really much to last episode. Like I, there were some bits I enjoyed. That's the thing. Even with a bad episode of MLW, there are still parts I enjoy, and because it's only an hour, I can pinpoint exactly what didn't quite click so you can tell from my tone as well i enjoyed the crap out of this episode mlw because we had three very different matches some promos building up to certain things and a character that i hope i get to see more of i will talk about that very very soon so without further ado ladies and gentlemen how about we get into mlw fusion episode 77 Main evented by the bunkhouse brawl between Jimmy Havoc and good old Mance Warner. The show opened with a recap of Austin Aries doing his brain buster to Teddy Hart during last week's MLW tag title match. Rich Bikini said Aries could be final suspended. Hart was transported to a local hospital for testing. They did a lot of big graphics of this big hospital building just to make it seem like some serious shit was going down. That was before the Fusion Open video aired. And we open up with the first match, Myron Reed and Koto Brazil, accompanied by Jordan Oliver, the Injustice group, Injustice League, as I call them, against the group of Gringo Loco and Airwolf. Now, Injustice come out holding their picket signs, tape over their mouths. Bikini noted that Reed was wearing his uh, suspicious chest protector. So his reasoning, we had a pre-taped little segment here, where Reed was blaming Gringo Loco for hitting him in the ribs with brass knuckles. Even though when you go and pl- replay that match back, they brought in the brass knuckles, then Gringo Loco turned it around on Injustice and gave them a taste of their own medicine. But because of circumstances which were clearly not their fault, you have Myron Reed has got this big-ass chest protector with him now to help with his... Uh, ribs that were supposedly br- busted for a good few weeks. And they're talking about how Tupac, that like the cops killed Tupac, and they're really laying it on thick, just how they feel portrayed and just how they, they it's, ev- everyone's out to get them. And like, I, I get the whole, like, commentary kind of made a good point with this, where they... They want everyone to feel sorry for them, but and they're talking about how the corrupts that they they wear prison outfits because they feel that they are prisoners of the corrupt system. But they don't talk about anything else going on in MLW, like what is so corrupt about it that they attack officials when they don't get their way. But I, I'm trying to get I'm trying to understand this group and I it's not I, I understand if they're just being assholes for the sake of assholes. But they they want to try and have a deeper meaning, and if they have more promo time, maybe they could explain it a bit better. But well, at the very least, they could say, like they could talk to about Court Bauer. They could talk about just like you, the company is run by the world champion who is missing. Where's your champ gone? You know. Well, they don't want to mess with Contra. They probably get eaten. 
<laughs> Injustice versus Contra, that would be a very quick, very quick six man tag, and Kalachi would probably like devour all of them. No, that's just fantasy booking in my head. But just that fact, like, if you want to, you want characters with chips on their shoulders, give them storyline to feed into why exactly they have chips on their shoulders. You know, like it is, it baffles me. Like they're very talented. They're very talented, capable wrestlers in the ring. They're just lumped with this story that's mm, not doing them much favors right now, shall we say? But we go into the match itself. So we start out Gringo Loco. He's doing um, a couple suplexes to Bra- uh, Brazil. It's one of the corners of the ring. Airwolf tagged was tagged in, and the broadcast team noted that. They keep noting that he's only 19 years old. He's like trained by Ken Anderson. Like he's got a future ahead. He's got a career ahead of him. They still want us to think that Airwolf has a lot of momentum going on behind him. It's kind of quietened down. I mean, ever since he beat Phoenix, they haven't really. It feels like they haven't really capitalized on all that energy just yet. Uh, Reed was tagged in. He took a chop on the chest protector from Wolf, which did nothing because he's wearing a chest protector, and he's just like. Just strutting his stuff, just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I just took a chop, but it didn't even hurt. Ah, da, da, da. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Da, 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 da. Uh, Gringo caught Reed in Brazil in the corner and did a double electric chair fall. Very ugly, very ugly double electric chair. There's a reason why that not many, like, there's a reason people don't usually do the electric chair much and when there's two people on your shoulders and you're doing a double electric chair there is the risk of people falling too quickly someone landing on their neck someone landing on the other side of the ring like onto the other ring ropes depending on how tall people are jesus christ it was a very interesting spot shall we say but you had so gringo crawled in crawled into the corner tagged in airwolf the cut to the crowd and the wolf covered brazil and pinned him Shivani questioned if Brazil was the legal man in the match, and Bikini said that he didn't ha- believe Brazil tagged in. So a small box showed that Reed was the last man from his team to tag into the match. Uh, yeah. Following that, yeah, Brazil attacked the referee just out of sheer frustration. It was a great match. You ha- again, the tactics by Injustice, the guerrilla tactics. The moment the referees turn, they just, they just pounce. Jordan Oliver at ringside wonderful wonderful work from them Uh, the usual high flying match that we expect from mlw but with a little extra bit of story beats where they're attacking the referee i would have thought so post match they just beat down the referee because they're pissed off they're lost i would have thought gringo loco and airwolf would have come to defend the referee like made injustice scurry away but not they just left the referee just like screw it they clearly don't like the mlw officials as well like i don't know what's up with that it was a solid show, opening tag match. It kind of fell apart with that double electric chair. It got very weird and just the uneventful finish. So after Gringo Loco had done that, just having to quickly tag in Airwolf so that he could do the pinfall. And it was a lot of, there's a beat that just didn't really work too well. Um, they, it's good to have the little mid card few going. So we've got Injustice versus Gringo, Wolf and Zenchi. Uh, the illegal man finish, questionable finish. It kind of it would play into injustice. Ongoing complaints about the officials. So, depending on how they work that, they can actually use that going forward. So that would actually give them story. Dare I say? Now, build up to the next match or in the build up to the main event, we get a few promos from good old Mansa, and this was without a doubt my favorite, my absolute favorite Mansa Warner promo. Because he is standing in the front of a fence at an outdoor venue with an older man who is drinking some moonshine. And who is it? It's his uncle, the Moon Man. And this guy, I love this guy. It's just, he he looks like just the crazy guy from around the street. You've just convinced him to make, like, stand behind you and look intimidating. That's exactly what Mance Warner's done. He's just, it looks like he's just grabs a random guy walking past, act intimidating, but he's taking a swig of moonshine. He's he's not even he's not talking. He's just leering at the camera. He's just continually taking repeated swigs of moonshine just to let you know that he's the Moon Man. And, like, <laughs> and Mance Warner, I don't know how he did it. 
he's like he he was doing this he's getting heated talking about Jimmy Havoc and comedically he could like cut to Moon Man and just make sure like what you got there. Oh, he's got some stuff in there. I'm gonna have some of that for later. You gotta keep you on your feet, Moon Man. It's like the level of quick wit and timing on him is just brilliant. Uh, yeah, Moon Man is not wearing any shoes. Moon Man is probably like a few beers short of a six pack, to be fair. But he was such a breath of fresh air. Like, and, and Man's Warner, he's saying that Moon Man's going to be in my corner, Jimmy Havoc, you're going to die. And with God as my witness, I'm going to end you. Moon Man, let's go, let's bounce. <laughs> He's in West. He lives in West Virginia. They don't have internet out there. Out there, he can't see shit. He can't even see shit right now because of what stuff he's drinking. What is that? Oh, that's some good stuff right there. I love Mance. I love Moon Man. This was that that my favorite Mance Warner promo. And we get another one from him later. We got spoiled this episode of Major League Wrestling. We get a promo package of Dominic Garini saying he's coming to MLW this fall. I give it another couple weeks until he finally debuts. I think he's going to be facing off against, um, uh, yeah, Ariel Dominguez. Like that, that's who he's meant to be facing. I don't expect that match to go for long. He's probably going to break him in half in like a minute. I, I say a minute. You have a nice little um, Brock Lesnar Kofi match. I just saw that. I just saw SmackDown before I watched the LW. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen it, just uh, have that visual in your head. We have. Rich Bikini is talking about Injustice and Austin Aries. We're recapping again from last week. And we cut to Brian Pillman Jr. So we're checking in at his home in Cincinnati. And he got off the phone with Bret Hart and the entire Hart family. Pillman says that Teddy is permanently injured. Now, I, they've got to be careful with certain words they use. Permanently injured. Pillman addressed Aries, said that he would do what he has to do next week to take him down. So Brian Pillman is taking it upon himself just to avenge the Hart Foundation in in everyone's place. So it seems like Davy Boy is constantly by Teddy's side. Uh, we're hearing more about this. I've got some other news about Teddy as well. I'll cover that after the end of the episode. Hey, am I the only one who wanted um, Steve Austin to break into Pillman's house with a gun? Maybe that. Maybe that's just me. But it's just like it's been a while since uh, we've had a wrestling promo with a pillman at their house you know I, I i would have loved a homage or something a little nod uh that that's just me we had a little uh, bit of selena de la renta action this week because of course we do she's reproached by a cameraman earlier in the day who's asking her about jimmy havoc's strategy her consigliere if you will about his stra- his strategy in the main event selena says she wouldn't tell the cameraman and would tell everyone what she wants very very soon and the cameraman is just like bitch like no joke that, that's how he ended the promo just like can i have a word no bitch <laughs> where did that come from i'm surprised that she didn't slap the crap out of him whoever he was probably the guy who was taping when conan uh got mugged by the rest of promotioners very weird but yeah why would she want to talk to you puta why would she want to talk to you Bikini is going back saying um, they're, they're talking about Saturday Night Super Fight. They focused on Jager Far 2 versus LA Park for the MLW World Championship November 2nd. I can't wait. No DQ match. Those two are going to do some great things. It was really the only mention of the world title on this week's episode. So as much as I love this week's episode of MLW Fusion, I do want to preface the fact that so you have Far 2 and Contra who are regrouping from war chamber you have teddy hart who's hospitalized you have hammerstone who's coming back from japan after the n1 victory tournament he's coming back he'll be back soon in the next week or so and you have the other members of the dynasty not not really that the, the tag team division isn't really focused on that much like they don't have a chance to focus on that much so all the champions are not there on the episode. That's very telling. It's like, you kind of want to feel the presence of one of the champions kind of leading the division right now, and none of them are able to or 
capable of doing so because you have MJF with AEW, you have Hammerstone. Hammerstone seems to be the leading man, but they're but he's been the ambassador for MLW. So he had Japan. He's doing the Crash. The Crash is actually at the at the time I was talking. They're actually going to be having their Crash card very soon. So the next uh, MLW Major League Report, I'm hopefully have the results from the Crash MLW show. We'll be able to break that down. I'm hoping that they give out some videos from it which would be amazing. But yeah, I it's just a little, it's a little tidbit. The fact that you kind of want to, it, it's all well and good that the announcers are reminding you that there's championship implications coming out soon, but you need to see your champions more like in the ring. And th- these are tapings, right? These are tapings, yes. But mm, we need a little bit more visual reminder that there's champions in MLW and that they, want to want nothing but the best for the brand and right now not quite happening which is sad to say uh before i get into the other matches from this episode of major league wrestling how about we have a little talk to greg with our sponsors promotional consideration paid for by the following Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B-plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Hey everyone, just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that be on the field, in the gym, on the gaming field. That's right, they have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods, you can get coffee beans, you can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life, specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game, and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com. And for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com. Enter the code B+, at checkout. Getting back into the swing things, ladies and gentlemen, we get a promo with Ross and Marshall Von Eric discussing their intentions to challenge for the MLW Tag Team Championships while their father Kevin is standing alongside them. Apparently the family visited a local hospital in Texas just to put some smiles on some faces. We didn't actually see them visiting any sick kids or anything like that, but they're uh, coming out of the reception area. The cameraman asked what they were doing, just saying the makers of friends, saying hi. And all of a sudden, you have MJF and Richard Holiday show up, pretending to be surprised to see them. They're talking about business, good old just business deals, you know, all the, all about the hustle. MJF uh, shook their hands while Holiday said he couldn't believe he couldn't because he had a coffee in his hand. And the dynasty are just healing it up. They're saying they're considering the idea of buying the, the hospital, turning it, the property into a hotel or a casino. They can't really decide which. And... The Kevin's just like, what about the kids? And just like, we don't have kids. You're funny. That's a cute response. You're funny. Uh, and they're just saying like, what will help the economy? Some little car kid hospital or a booming casino? And saying all this shit. And Kevin knocks the coffee cup out of Holiday, Holiday's hand. And I love the dynasty's reaction. Like just this little comedic bit. Just they, they knock his Starbucks out of his hand and they, they have a, their brain just seizes up like they go into meltdown mode and just mgf is like you can't do that there's laws now 
and is like, don't worry, Holiday, we'll get you a Starbucks. And he's just, he's hyperventilating. It's, it's funny. It's, it's hilarious. It's, I think that ML, I think that MLW are cherishing the moments they have left with, with MJF, especially just making him as corny as possible for the next few weeks or however many else times they have him. It was just fun. And it's kind of confirmed what I thought last week anyway. So they're going to have the Dynasty versus the Von Eriks. Uh, the, they, they're going to they're gonna be at the crash anyways. So whether they're going to keep that going after the crash, my idea would be that depending on how imminent, imminent MJF's contract is with All Elite Wrestling, how much longer, how much more indie dates he can really squeeze in there, whether... Like he loses the title at the crash, and then whatever next taping they have in their rematch, they definitively lose to the Von Eriks. That would work, and then it would revitalize that tag team division, and you give Dynasty some time to prepare. Maybe Holiday and Hammerstone could team up. Like I, I, I don't know. Again, a lot of question, a lot of things up in the air with the Dynasty right now. But I am, at the very least, I am glad that they are. Uh, they are having that match with them before whatever else happens. Our second match for MLW, Timothy Thatcher versus Douglas James. So the most scientific wrestler, the heavyweight grappler, Timothy Thatcher, coming off uh, his last match was with Dave Boy Smith a few episodes ago, two heavyweight grapplers just going at it. It was wonderful to see Douglas James making his MLW debut. He's got... A lot of background at MMA, pro wrestling. I believe there was they put on there like he's got some jujitsu or kickboxing background. He's like you have Thatcher, who's definitely got the height advantage, like bar none. You can tell straight away. And uh, he's got that old school body type. I love this match, and I'm so glad. I I one this is one of the reasons I love Major League Wrestling because you didn't need ring ropes in this match. Timothy Thatcher is a very different animal to a lot of wrestlers in that he is a actual wrestler. He's an actual grappler, an actual wrestler, and he will make you wrestle his game. That he will make you like go towards his style through sheer force alone, sheer strength. The only time that the ropes were used is when Douglas James wanted to try and do a, like a top rope move, which I, I'll, t- I'll touch on in a second. But the crowd, like, this could easily, the crowd could have just, like, been, like, had short attention spans and yelled boring or whatever. And but they they were into it. They loved it. Like, some of them know who Thatcher is, which I'm very grateful for. And, yeah, you didn't need ring ropes here. You, this could have just, this is a straightforward on-the-mat match. And like, it, it didn't it didn't drag. It didn't drag at all. It didn't feel like it was repetitive or anything like that it's just thatcher repeatedly every time douglas james tries to counter or give a bit of offense thatcher is just constantly driving him dragging him down to the mat he has an answer for every single move that douglas james throws at him and it, this what and i make it sound like it's a squash but like the way that these two like work the mat it wasn't a squash like there was a proper legitimate fight because like Thatcher, he controlled the early part with his mat based style. Both men got to their feet. Then um, James slapped Thatcher across the face, and he kind of threw some kicks in there. Caught the last one and applied an ankle, like which he turned into another move. James slipped out and ended up on the top of Thatcher for a two count. Right, you had James. He was applying a couple of cross arm breakers in there, which Thatcher escaped out of, like by deadlifting James deadlifting him into a suplex it was it was effortless it was absolutely effortless i love timothy thatcher he works so well in the land of major league wrestling like people know him as a former evolved champion the the guy is an incredible wrestler uh what happened was so james applied a gear guillotine choke but thatcher powered out of it again and james blasted thatcher with a knee to the head and followed up with a dive from the top rope like it was just like a reverse splash that he was going for Thatcher, he kind of put his knees up. I think it was a bit of miscommunication, but he put his knees up, shall we say, and then Thatcher applied a Fujiwara armbar, much like MJF does, 
but the moment he he moment he locked it in, Douglas James was just like nah, tapped out straight away. Just knew that nah, I'm there's no way I'm getting out of this. He's got me. He's he's done. Your winner by submission, Timothy Thatcher. And it was about ten. It was good. 10 15 minute match it went it it went really well the crowd loved it and i respect the crap out of mlw for introducing these kind of wrestling matches that the just the diversity of you can have a hardcore main event you can have a mat based style middle match you can have your high flying cruiserweights to open a show it just so and it didn't feel like out of place everything felt like it belonged there. And I, I love everything about that with major league wrestling. Afterwards, you had Casey Lennox come in to interview Thatcher. He told her that James did a good job, earn his respect. He told the crowd that keep your eye on uh, James because yeah, he's got a future ahead of him. Like the way he would implement a lot of high, high knees and running kicks to try and knock down Thatcher on a smaller man. It would work out great. I can tell that I could honestly see him going up against Hammerstone after he's fought a few more smaller guys. And then once he's facing off against a guy like Hammerstone, who might still be the open weight champion, who knows it would work out a lot better for him. Like, nah, I know how to scout you now. So, and there was a lot of, a lot of respect there. So apparently they're both, they're both boys from California and Thatcher actually offered to help uh, train James if he ever wanted to just brush up on some things in terms of his style, which was pretty cool. Apparently like that was very reclusive. So there's a very, very high praise from him. And we get a little promo. I say promo, not really a promo where he's talking about when he came to MLW, there was one man that he wanted to face and that is filthy Tom Lawler. And then he says, that sounds like a super fight, doesn't it? That was his go away line. Saturday night super fight. It was corny, like it, it, you could tell some MLW officials just like, okay, make sure you say this line, and then everything else you can do whatever the hell you want. And Thatcher doesn't need to do anything else. He's just like, yep, that's the match you're gonna get. And we're also, I'll let you guys know now that after Saturday Night Super Fight for the next tapings for Blood and Thunder, we found out that Timothy Thatcher will once again return from Major League Wrestling, facing off against the professional. Low key. Now I MLW. I'm putting this out there into the universe because I got. I was hoping for far too and low key to just uh, beat the shit out of each other in the war chamber. It didn't happen, right? And I was expecting that David Goliath clash with like one of the best strikers and with the best strikers in the game in low key. But you have that match now with Thatcher, who is such a Matt based guy who will just ground you down. Former world champion Loki. That he Thatcher is facing two former world champions in the space of two weeks. That is incredible. That that is amazing. I love that. I love that the legitimacy of him just brushing off with the world champions. It's fantastic. And or oh, yeah, I'm I'm more excited for Loki versus Thatcher, but I think depending on how they work Tom Lawler with Thatcher, they could maybe work him into because uh, apparently Tom Tom Lawler he no showed a couple of media events, so they're try, maybe kind of suggesting that maybe they might turn him heel soon. I don't know. So we haven't we've heard nothing from him since War Chamber. It's it's been the Von Erichs, it's uh, Loki's kind of taking a break for a second. Hmm. It would it would revitalize the character somewhat. I think it, he would need it because as a baby face, he hasn't really done much for me. Even as champion, he didn't really do much. So when he gets savage, when he gets relentless, Lola can go because he is a very he's a natural striker as well. It works out really well, but. Touching base back to the match itself, like just that physical throwback style between Thatcher and Douglas James. Yeah, it would have been nice to hear from both wrestlers before the match. So we had some sense of what their personalities were like, but this was just like two guys. This could this match could have happened like a century ago. That, that That's the kind of just like no story, 
two legit catches catch can grapplers fight. That's what it was. Uh, and then, then, then we have next uh, in the build up to the main event, ladies and gentlemen. Backstage, Jimmy Havoc leads a cameraman to a Halloween like setup with a hanging scarecrow and everything else, and the words "I'm coming," right? And Havoc says that he probably assumed that Manswater would do something like this and would, would try to upset him, but he gets off on this man. Jimmy Havoc is just like <laughs> he's just he's he's breath he's just like he's licking the pinch off because like <laughs> you're screwed man <laughs> i love that like jimmy havoc he's just salivating at the idea of the bunkhouse brawl i would have much rathered i would especially after the promo before um, instead of i'm coming i would have much rathered he's coming with the implication that moon man did that shit because my god i need more moon man in my life that was a, I, I it feels like I'm I'm putting doing a bit with this. I shit you not. Watch the primer with Manswater and Moon Man. Listen back to this and tell me what you think of the guy. Because honestly, even hit me on the socials as well. Moon Man is the future of Major League Wrestling. I am telling you all right now. We get another Manswater promo. So and he's talking to Casey Lennox backstage instead of uh, Casey holding up a little whiteboard. Like they're actually in a little classroom section where there's a whiteboard on the wall and Warner has Lennox draw all these different items that will be in the bunkhouse brawl and uh Casey's not the best artist <laughs> and every time that she draws something Mass is just like really like that you call that a chair you call that a pumpkin that's okay that's okay old man's is like what university did you go to never mind darling keep going keep going <laughs> and Warner just finishes it off with a spittoon just gets Lennox to hold the spittoon while he uh, puts some saliva in it and she just like, she gags. Which is, yeah, great way to end the promo. I, I love the, the game plan promos from Mance, but the, the better promos are him thinking and drinking outside in some other location. They always do some great work there. And yeah, what Bikini is hyping up Brian Pillman Jr. versus Austin Aries for next week's Fusion and we get the Bunkhouse Brawl match. This was fun. So this is this is basically just a street fight, no DQ match, but the all the all the items around the ring are stuff you would find like your good old boy country style street fight. So instead of like more like steel chairs and everything, is like is pumpkins, but barrels of hay. There was a pitchfork. There was a shovel. There was a door. I'll, I'll get onto that in a second. There was, yeah, and off, off, as well, as well, how can I forget? There was a bull rope with a cowbell. And Rich Burkini and Tony Schiavone, they watched a little bit of Saturday Night Live because they're just like, this match needed more cowbell. And every five seconds, it's just like, I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. And the crowd, uh, the crowd are just chanting for more cowbell. It was, I never knew I I needed that. I never knew I needed more cowbell in my life with wrestling, especially with a street fight match. But yeah, Major League Wrestling has graced me with the presence of more cowbell. And I can always go back to this episode of MLW. If I ever have the yearning for more cowbell, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to watch this match. And you should too, because trust me, nothing gets your mood more hyped up. Nothing gets your mood elevated than with some cowbell. <laughs> Oh dear. We had some whiskey barrels, not cracker barrels. That's a different promotion. Uh, wheelbarrow, pumpkins, yeah. All of it's there. Warner came out with the waving the American flag, but Havoc jumped him before he, he could start the match. Started choking him flat out at ringside. These guys did some great spots. Like a lot of spots involving a pumpkin. One of them was a jack o' lantern. Havoc threw a pumpkin towards Havoc, who moved, and it looked like it ended up in the first row. And it, it looked like it kind of took a fan out who was smiling and just having fun with it. Luckily, he caught it. It looked like it knocked him flat out in the head. But just very, very close there. Very close call there by Major League Wrestling. I think, like, in terms of Mance's last uh, match that he had, last hardcore match with Sammy Callahan, 
I think Sammy Callahan's match was better, but they use a lot of similar beats from that match with the bunkhouse brawl because there were some staple spots and Mance Warner had, instead of his tongue stapled to a door, it was stapled to a pumpkin. And then there was like two different staple spots with Mance Warner's tongue. The dude just loves tongue spots. It's just, it's, I don't see him in wrestling. Like he's he's balls he's balls to the wall crazy to do it so ah uh, they good on you good on you Mance Jesus Christ well th- this match was fun it was bombastic but you can there was you could tell that the there was an escalation you could tell that it didn't feel like it there was a purpose to it it didn't feel chaotic which is weird to say given that you have Mance Warner and Jimmy Havoc but you could tell that like the where it was going. You had Warner set up a doorboard over a couple of chairs in the ring. Havoc suplexed him onto some hay bales and then performed the German suplex through another board that was set up in the corner. Then you got Havoc staple Warner's tongue to the ring board. Uh, Havoc placed a pumpkin over Warner's head and then went to the ropes. Warner threw the pumpkin at Havoc and then superplexed him through the board that was over two chairs. And then Warner followed it up, followed up with a lariat clothesline got the pinfall so Mance Warner in his own kind of style match defeated Jimmy Havoc I can't remember the last time that Jimmy Havoc won a match in Major League Wrestling it's he is the he's the good hand for Major League Wrestling to get someone over as uh, as a legitimate threat as a hardcore guy as a badass that like he did it to LA Park he did it to Mance he did it to Sammy uh, he's done it to countless others, to Tom Lawler, Matty Wahlberg here in Australia. Like y- you want someone to have like a deathmatch style confrontation, but you want to make them seem like they can go over. Get Jimmy Havoc to make whoever his opponent is look like a million bucks, because yeah, he makes Mans want to look like a million bucks, especially with those tongue spots. And what happened afterwards after the match? Havoc attacked Warner. Cut him open with some razor wire. So this this match was not really that bloody. And then after the match, you have Havoc with the razor wire. And immediately, Havoc is just busted open. Which, of course, because it's bloody razor wire. Security and referees intervene while Havoc put the wire in the mouth of Warner. And pulled on it from behind. Kind of like a like really extreme cross face. It was ugly. Havoc fought on security and started biting Warner's forehead. So he got his wing he got his win back, he got his heat back even though he lost. Jimmy Havoc. Dude is an absolute killer. And it, it keeps promotiones looking strong that her um, Selena's consigliere can actually leave G- Mance Warner in a pile of his own blood like that. And I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Like logically Warner goes over in this style of match, but yeah, it's good that Havoc got his heat back by attacking him. The live crowd had fun. I I have, I'm getting more accustomed to staple spots in wrestling. They're they're not really my favorite thing, but you get, you get used to them. And we have like a few more stories coming out. So next week, of course, we've got Austin Aries versus Brian Pillman Jr. I, I can't wait to see what those two do, how they're going to actually work that match, because I would expect Aries to win it and then go on to face Teddy Hart and upset, actually claim the middleweight title. You're going to have a Lucha de Paula Haas match. Los Parks are going to clash with Magnus and Setimo Dragon, and with the Destroyer readying himself for war against Contra's Jacob Fatu at Superfight. So next week, I hope that we get more from Contra. I hope that we get more from Promociones. We haven't seen those two teams really butt heads yet. They, they're they holding off, and I need to see more. I need to see what they're actually going to do. Uh, you got, apparently, uh, the, with the promo, the, the preview for next week, the Dynasty and the Von Erics are going to clash again some more, some more updates on Teddy Hart's condition. And, oh, Dominic Grini is going to make his debut against Ariel Dominguez, so I thought that it would take another couple of weeks, but nope. The Bone Collector, Dominic Garini, will be in MLW ring 
starting next week as they all get ready for Saturday Night Super Fight. This will be fun. This will be fun. I have some other news about Major League Wrestling going forward, about their future, their plans. Now, this has been rumored for a while. The Major League Wrestling women's division. I have been worried about this. I have been very worried. But it looks like they are going to try and take this as seriously as they can. So they've announced, the first person they've announced for their women's roster that signed a multi-year deal with MLW is Zita Zhang. So she's a female fighter. She recently competed in China where she honed her skills under the tutelage of Shima from OWE and AEW. She has learned different styles of uh, martial arts. She's competed in different promotions around the world. And like she hopes to become the inaugural women's champion. Right. I think that she was part of the Mae Young Classic. And I'm I'm pretty sure she was in something one of the one of the classics. I, I can't remember which one. But yeah. She's I, I've looked her up. She's a great athlete. The court bow even said that she's gonna be a great model. She he can't wait to have her join Major League Wrestling. She's two and in MMA, dangerous striker, a lot of submission matches. So it's a good start. It's a good start. And I, I worry. So depending on how they do this, because Major League Wrestling, they haven't gone wrong yet with a lot of the things they've done. But because they've been such a boys club for so long, I worry that they're going to turn their women's roster into women of honor like Ring of Honor have. And that division is... That, that's all I can... That's how I can sum it up. That That's how, what that division is like. Um... So I, I trust you guys, but damn, like that would make five championships in Major League Wrestling. And if you they can't really focus on the champion, champions as it is in Major League Wrestling, I don't know what adding a women's division will do because are they going to do a separate thing for the women? Again, women of honor, like Ring of Honor. Are they going to add some more time to Major League Wrestling so that they can have at least one women's match each week or every couple of weeks. Very hard to very hard to say how they're going to swing it. You have talks, like Mance Warner got hospitalized from the main event. Like they, these are all from the uh, MLW website. They're saying, will Havoc face legal league sanctions because of his actions, which we'll see what happens there. And you got the talk about, so for Blood and Thunder, which I mentioned, apparently they're going to have the Mystery Box Battle Royal. So it's going to be 20, 20 wrestlers, Mystery Box, Mystery Box Battle Royal at the Gilt, Gilt Nightclub in Orlando, Florida. I believe they've done that before. It's an over-the-top battle royal where all 20 of the participants are a mystery until they're announced. So no one knows who they are. Wrestlers don't know who the competition is in the bout until they enter the ring. Uh, I'm curious, like, what, how they're going to organize it. Um, I, I can't remember the last one they did. It must have been, like, a very early, early episode of Major League Wrestling when they did the last Mystery Box Battle Royal for it to be such a prestigious thing to bring back, you know? And I'll, I'll end on, ladies and gentlemen, how Teddy Hart has apparently been cleared by his doctors, but the question remains as well, uh, how injured is he still so the middleweight champion there's a lot of speculation still you have Hart was with the brain buster as well and you had Pillman say like there's permanent injuries so you can't really throw away or throw words like permanent out there and not have there be some kind of implications so Teddy Hart he was cleared by a Calgary doctor to return under the protest of MLW's physician Dr. Swegler so Dr. Swickler is their kayfabe doctor. And, hmm, hmm, hmm. I could see this working into Aries taking advantage of some kind of nagging injury, like maybe his shoulder, maybe Teddy's shoulders, maybe his neck, something like that to get the middleweight title not clean, but just to, he's done the damage before and that's how he's going to win it. It's all setting up. It's all a story beat. It's all going to work out in MLW's favor, 
And that is pretty much the Major League Report this week, guys. And as I mentioned, just three very different, very diverse matches, all with their plus, all with their different selling points. Didn't feel out of place. Loved it. After last week with all the everything was stretched for time. Worked out this week that this was just a fun episode of Major League Wrestling. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. And you guys should keep watching Major League Wrestling, especially in the the renaissance now of professional wrestling because AEW Dynamite happened already. We've got NWA Power coming out soon. SmackDown's moved to Fox. NXT is on the USA Network. Like, it's all happening. Everything's on all the time. It's going to be hard to navigate through it. But guess what? As long as you stick with the B+, it'll all be all right. So thank you very much for listening to me, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to follow me on all those socials, I'm at Mr. Mysterious with 107i, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Grapple. Hit me up and let me know what you thought about the latest episode of Major League Wrestling. Which match was your favorite? I'm kind of tossing up between um, Thatcher and James or the Bunkhouse Brawl. I think I enjoyed, in terms of the wrestling, Thatcher and James more, but because of Moon Man, I think I might like the Bunkhouse Brawl just that little bit more because of that Moon Man promo. Moon Man for MLW Manager 2020. I don't know. Something like that. If you want to follow us collectively here at the B+, Plus because we're a great bunch, you know it's true. Deep down, you know. You know. We are at the B+, Plus Wrestle on Twitter because those wrestling wouldn't fit and the B+, Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, our Patreon, any amount you could donate, I mean any amount, would be greatly appreciated. It all go- goes towards the channel. It keep it just make sure that we keep giving you all what you want when you want showcasing the very very best of Australian wrestling and keeping you up to date on all the wrestling news from across the globe because you'll need someone like us moving forward in the wrestling climate. Believe you me. Like, share, subscribe, hit that five star review. I've been I've been this mysterious with the Major League Report and guess what? I'll see you soon.